What is up my dudes and gents and ladies? <laughs> Today we're going to be installing the Avid Pre-Runner Front Bumper, I believe is the technical name. This is their one with the, uh, it's the Pre-Runner, it's got a little bull nose on the front of it. Um, we got all the parts here. Uh, just It came fitted like this together already. Uh, here's the skid plate, got your rubber pieces. You got your uh, toe hook, or not toe hook, D-ring mounts. This is also what's going to go through here. Uh, you got your fog light deletes. If you don't have fog lights, I don't need them, so I'm probably just going to keep them for extra. Um, going to figure out what that is. <laughs> um, got a fair lead. Don't need this. I got my own fair lead cover. Going to have a winch. Um, also going to figure out what this is. Um, it's important. All these are important. Um, I'm still working on this. Uh, this is your radi er, radiator mount, a new one, and your bag of goodies. Don't, don't mind, don't mind that. Bag of goodies and winch cable relocation stuff. Um, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough of this entire process with you guys. Jimmy Chung is getting a facelift. Well needed, well deserved, definitely well wanted. Um, to start this off, we're gonna go ahead and open up your hood. Like always, um, you're gonna when you start getting onto your electrical stuff with your winch and everything, go and unplug the battery, especially when it comes to uh, the lights and stuff, which we will be removing these. So if you want to go and unplug your battery now, um, we're gonna start off by removing these four bolts right here. And normally there's plastic clips right here. I broke mine eons ago, so I don't have them no more. But they're they're basically these. Uh, just easy pop those out. They break really easy, so be careful. Um, and this is a T55. We're going to go ahead and remove all this, and then we're going to move on to the next ones, which are on the side and on the bottom, and we'll take off the lights, get this front bumper off, and get this show on the road. All right, catch you guys here in a second. Okay, guys. Oh, let that focus. Holy moly. Okay, guys, so now we're going to remove the bottom and side bolts real quick to remove the bumper. Um, right here is a Phillips, and down here is a Phillips, and it's the exact same for the other side as well. And moving on to the front of the vehicle, let's see, there is a bolt just like this, there's three of them, there's one here, one here, one here, and there's a Phillips on the bottom on each corner, okay? And once you get those removed, we'll move on to the side fenders and remove the bolts there, we'll remove the front bumper and the light housing. Okay guys, so now you're going to pop this panel out right here, there's a, two bolts right here, they're star heads, um, let me see, I believe, this is hard doing it one-handed. This is going to be a T25, and right here, these two, and then up here, those two hex heads are going to be a 7mm. If you break any of these clips, like as you can see, I have actually broke the fender itself. Um, no biggie. They actually give you some extra clips. Um, with that being said, you want to be very careful. Get your panel popper tool. Try to get that out without breaking them. Um, now that I've actually broken my panel entirely, I either have to buy a new one or repair it, which is going to be interesting. But yeah, we're going to take this off and we'll get on to removing the bumper itself and getting started. Okay guys, so we got all the bolts out. I actually already popped this out because it's impossible to do with one hand. And that's all I would have if I was on the camera. Um, what you do, see I actually broke this prior. Um, you're going to grab on right here and you're going to grab on under here. You're going to pull this out and it's going to unclip this and all these will slowly start to come. You just pry them out and you'll just pull here and it clips this off right here. All you'll hear clips popping off from underneath. All this starts coming off and do the same to this side. And then you'll just, with two hands, because I only have one, you're gonna pull it out a little bit, reach down there, and undo all your lights on both sides. And then you'll just pull the bumper side straight off and it'll pop right off, easy peasy. Okay guys, so now we got the front bumper removed. If you have a Trailhawk version, I know for sure of, you're gonna have to remove, uh, to remove your crash bar to put on your new um, winch mount. You're going to have to remove this piece and what would be um, right here would be a tow hook, okay? This is to a whole nother setup I had, so I'm going to be removing this as well. Y'all, unless you have my old bumper, you wouldn't have this. Um, so with this, uh, your tow hook would be in here. It would be just right back here in the back. You'd see it sticking out. Um, again, it's really easy. There's going to be two bolts up here. These are 19 millimeter. 
And then to remove this piece, it's these two, which are 15 millimeter, and this whole thing, after you move the tow hook, will fall straight out. Now, duly warned, on the driver's side, it is not as gonna be, it's not gonna be as sim simple. Ugh, not as simple. There's a little bit more tighter space, but it is feasible and can be done. All right, so we're gonna go and get that off, and then we'll be getting on to removing the crash bar and replacing the radiator bracket itself, along with putting on the new Avid ones. Okay, so now that we're here to this point, we're gonna be removing the crash bar. We've already got the tow hooks removed. If you haven't gone that far yet, go ahead and pause the video and come back to this point. But, so what we have here is you got a bolt here, 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 and here. Those are 15 millimeter, and you got this little one right here, which is a 10, okay? Now when you leave, when you're doing this, I normally leave, because I've taken this off a couple times, I leave one of these top ones in on each side, and I'll keep them very loose, so I can just come up and knock them out really easily. Be very careful right here, because this is connected to your radiator, okay? It's a soft hose, kinda. You don't want to mess anything up, okay? And you're gonna do this to both sides. Uh, there's no hose on the other side, it's just on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this. It's called the crash bar. And we're gonna get on with this. A little upside down right now, but we're gonna be removing this skid plate off the Trailhawk. Don't know if the regulars will have it. I'll be doing some research into that. But there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt here here, 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 and here. Okay, there's five in total. And when you do it, it's gonna start to sag a little. Don't need to worry about this. It's just a little plastic vent that's connected to it. That's perfectly fine. Um, now you're also gonna need a 13 millimeter to undo this one, this one, and this one. And that's gonna disconnect this one from this front skid plate. Keep these bolts in place, because I think you're gonna have to use them to remount everything back up in place afterwards and then we'll go to swapping out the radiator support itself. Okay guys, so we got this front skid plate removed. You're gonna be, you're gonna have, is it four bolts on each side? Yeah, four bolts on each side. So this is a 13 millimeter right here and right here, and these other three, which is identical on the other side, is gonna be a 15, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and knock those off, keep all these bolts in place, have this on hand. This has got supports up here. I'm gonna see if this will actually hold, if it holds it steady without showing any signs of loosening. We're good. If not, I'm gonna get a jack and like a two by four, put it across here to help support this. And we're gonna be taking these rubber pieces out of here and putting them back onto the new one. And hopefully everything will go smoothly. All right. All right guys, so to pop this off, it's real simple. You just kind of push it down and it, whoa, there it goes. And it pops right out. <laughs> uh, so get that real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and put in this one on this side. Go ahead and demonstrate on this side. Let's see, okay, right here. So you want this pointing like this, okay? And it will twist if you don't get it on perfectly. But it'll make it a lot easier when you're putting it back onto your radiator. All right. Make sure that's like that. That one's good. And now we're gonna get on to the fun part. So I found out you actually might wanna support this a little bit somewhere along the line. Maybe not on the radiator is the best part. Um, because when I undid these bolts, you notice I left one here and one on this side. The entire front facade housing decided it wanted to come down. Like it didn't fall down because I caught it. But you wanna support it somewhere along these points and give it a little support because it's just holding on by one bolt right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put one side on, like just one bolt, and then swing this one up and put this bolt and then start to knock them all back out and knock them back into place. All right, so we're gonna do that real quick and I'll be right back. We'll start putting on the new winch mount. Okay guys, so we got the new radiator support in place. Um, uh, like I said, you only wanna keep a bolt in on each side. Um, because the whole thing kind of shifted down unexpectedly. I don't read instructions. Um, <laughs> probably should. Um, but nothing was bad. Like I said, uh, just kind of like you want to support things. So when you're doing this, um, probably would be best to find a way to support it along the bottom somehow. I got skid plates, so it kind of doesn't help. Um, I don't know if it would be wise to put like a 2x4 along the bottom of the radiator. I don't want you to bend your radiator, so I mean... Just kind of play around with it, just be careful. Um, but now we're going to put on the winch plate, it's mount itself. Um, on a side note, there's the oil filter. 
never knew where that was at. Um, so we're going to go and get this installed. We're going to use the factory bolts. Everything lined out still, so it's still the 15 and the 10. It's going to go back to these holes here, 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 and same for that side over there. All right, just be mindful of this cable right here. You don't want to take it off. And yeah, I'll be right back when we get that installed. Okay, guys, we're making great progress right now, okay? So we're about an hour and a half, two hours into this build. Um, this is a little timely thing. I've taken this bumper apart several times, but I'm learning how to do this for the first time myself. I don't think I'm gonna finish it in one day. Um, if you are gonna start this, might I add, go ahead and try to allot yourself about five to six hours, because this is gonna involve cutting your wheel wells to fit that and transferring everything over. It's just, it's a little time consuming. Um, but now, we're gonna sort through our goodie bag, find our bolts, and we're gonna put these, we're gonna put those onto here. And we're gonna go ahead and slap the bumper on. We'll put the winch on another day. I'll do a little wiring on how to do that, separate video. And then we'll get on to transferring the lights and stuff also, and separating your painted piece from your plastic bumper and doing the cut as well. Okay guys, cause this takes too long to do by yourself. I got reinforcements. You're gonna use a T25 Torx, and it's you're gonna take out, there's three bolts on the driving lights, and then there's two bolts on the fog lights. Pops out really quick, really easily. Uh, you might wanna go ahead and clean them up if you're like me and go mudding all the time. And so we're gonna go and do the process of taking this off. You get you a flathead, and there's a little clipper that you just mash down. Push them down. and. Pull it up, right? Oh, yep. Pull it out. Just like that. You're gonna do that all along the entire black plastic piece, and it's gonna remove that from your painted piece. Pull that down. On a side note, there's also two Torx bits, one right here, right below the headlight, and one on the other side as well. Go through the light there. And you're gonna have to go through, if you got a trail hawk, you're gonna have to go through your hook mount. If uh, you can. Maybe not. Nope, maybe. We're just gonna have to make it short. Use a ratchet. Okay, we're Small gonna get this done. Alright guys, so we got this separated, we got the light housings. Uh, I went ahead in the meantime, installed these hooks, like I said. Um, 18 millimeter, super easy. Washer bolt on this side, uh, nut on this side, there you go. Okay, and I went ahead and installed my Fairlead and license plate. So like I said, I'm not gonna put my winch on just yet. And we're gonna go ahead and get to installing the lights. Got your driver light right here and your fog light right here. We're gonna flip the bumper upside down and get those done. All right, guys. So we got the lights done over here. We're finishing them up over here. What it is is it's this little short bolt, this nut, and one of these little black wa or the little black washers. Uh, this okay. So you put the washer on the bolt, which is a I'm using a T25. It's an Allen head. But the T25 works and then the uh, the nut on the bottom side, which is a 10 millimeter wrench. Hold it in, drill it down, ain't going nowhere. There's a little slit right here where this part slips in, and you shouldn't see it from the other side because it angles. Um, hopefully not, if I do, I'll file it down, and we're gonna go ahead and install this onto the bumper, start test fitting things, and start making our cuts. Okay guys, so one thing I found out while placing the bumper on here, your horns are kind of like touching it. So what we did, you can do just like we did over here, when you take the bumper off, just bend the bracket down. It'll make your horns kind of down facing, which might make them sound a little different, but yeah. I highly doubt it. But yeah, that gets them out of the way, so there's no issues with that touching the bumper. All right, guys, so now we're gonna cut off this plastic right here with the bumper on. Put a little piece of tape here flat. We got a die grinder, and we're just gonna nick this off really carefully. And like always, use safety glasses. this corner back here so because this corner is going to rub up against this and it's not going to sit flush. Alright, get that off. Ow! Woo, that's still hot. My hand sure cooled that down. 
All right, so we're going to do a test fit, see how it is. So you can see that this back end is pushing this up. So we need to cut off just a little bit more back here. And since this is the plastic, if you got a Dremel or the die grinder, you can kind of use it to melt the plastic. Oh, got the bumper. All right, so now that's flush with that. If you got a little lip, it's okay. Not gonna hurt it none. Can't even really tell. Put that back in place like so, and voila. Now we're gonna go on to cutting the front facade, which is gonna be a little bit more in detail, and we're probably gonna use some saw horses so we can actually stand up and do this the correct way. Okay guys, so we're coming to the cut scene. <laughs> get it? Um, we already did this side just to practice so we get this right for you guys. Um, Avid, unfortunately, didn't get me the templates that you will have for yours. So, just in case, this is kind of like a... It was just all miscommunication, too, when they wanted this on for a video for you guys. Um, what we did was... Here's a straight line, okay? So, this is the part you're going to be keeping. So, from here to here, we measured it's three and a, half, three and a quarter inches. Three and or three, three, three and three quarters inches. And we did the same over here. And this is just a hair over three and three quarters, but we're going to trim a little bit of this off. And that's how you got to make sure your sides are even. It's just take multiple measurements in multiple places. And if you don't have the template, and it's better to go back and cut a million times than do it once and be totally wrong because you can't add plastic back on. Not that easy. All right, so we're going to go and get that cut. We'll get finished on the sizing, get the lights finished installed, the bottom skid plate, and we will be wrapping this up by trimming the wheel wells. Okay guys, so I rebolted this down, gonna put the new clips on here, set that in place. And now we're gonna I'm gonna get the die grinder and we'll cut this wheel well across. Wow, I don't know what takes up my camera. Cut the wheel well across, chop this off, and there's gonna be three mounting points up here that they have added into it, and yeah, I'll be finished with that and we'll be finishing up this install of the tree runner front bumper. Okay guys, so We've got the, uh, ran out of time the other day to finish this up, but we got all this wheel well trimmed up to where now it's all exposed. Um, this part right here that I mentioned where you can bolt it back, there's the three holes. You can do it if you want. I'm personally not going to right now because I'm going to be taking this bumper on and off again to be putting on my winch. Um, I'll actually be doing a little thing over that. And so on this part right here, also, I just haven't gotten that yet. Um, I actually broke a thing when I took the wheel well off back in there. This thing to mount, I'm about to redo that. And I'm just gonna trim this up to where it sits flush behind this. I might just try to figure out a way to bring it over, heat it up and bend it, personally. Um, but, cause that's, looks fine to me. But, I just wanna make it look clean. But yeah, we're gonna get the winch on. The pre-runner's all finished. Everything's installed, all the lights work, looks good, looks clean, drives nice, I've been driving with it. And yeah, overall, it's a pretty simple install, takes a couple hours if you're not used to it. Um, took me about four to six hours, somewhere around there, because I haven't like, really, like I was really nervous about cutting this, but I'm always nervous for some reason about this little stuff, which actually really isn't that bad. But um also these plastic pieces right here i'll be putting those on too it's very self-explanatory you just put them in the hole get your washer i mean your nut reach back underneath there from like this back side because this back side's opened up and you could just put it on and you're good to go but since i'm gonna be taking this off to put the winch back on in a totally separate thing um i'm not gonna actually worry about it right now
But yeah, so that's the install for the pre-runner. If you have any questions, like and subscribe. Hop over to Avid Essentials, pick you up one because these things are nice. Totally worth it. Opens up the ground clearance a lot, alongside paired up with their snorkel. It makes your ride one heck of a beast. See you later. There's a moment in your bones when, when the fire takes over. Blood is running, heart is pumping, as the battle gets closer. They can say what they want now.